And so, Jeremy, the first Vatican Council in the 19th century solemnly declared the Pope is infallible when speaking as shepherd and teacher of all Christians. Now, have you any questions? <laughs> it is all crystal clear to you. Mrs. Spring, how many times must I tell you? Do not interrupt me when I'm in the middle of an important consultation. Your new curate has arrived. Oh, he has. Oh, right, fine, fine. Now, Mrs. Spring, we're going to be stuck with our new curate, whether we like it or not, for the next few years. But I'm resolved to find out what sort of metal he's made from, right? Here, Jeremy, here's sixpence for you. Now then, same time next Saturday morning, show the father in. Go along in, Father Boy. I'm Neil Boyd. Welcome to St. Jude's, Father Neil. A hundred thousand welcomes to you. <laughs> you just saved my life, did you know that? Oh, glad to be of help, Father. Oh, yes. Yes. I've been dying for somebody with a hip of wit and intelligence to talk to. Give me a hand. <laughs> Mr. Spring, a nice hot cup of tea for Father Neil. And fresh tea leaves, don't forget. <laughs> Not them he was reading in the bottom of last night's cauldron. <laughs> Stay here long, Father Neil. You'll need six guardian angels. <laughs> that woman came to me 20 years past. A perfect instance of the worst coming to the worst. Now sit down. <laughs> there, fine, fine. Now, now Bishop O'Reilly tells me that... Uh, where is it? Ah, here we are. Tells me that he's, uh, he's but uh, recently made a priest of you. Three weeks ago, Father. Oh, he'll be ready to be baptised then. Father? Or not with water, Father Neil. With fire. Fire? Yes, the bishop says that you can stay here at St. Jude's, but on one condition, that you prove yourself a reasonable young curate. Now, do you want to stay here? Yes, please, Father. Mm -hmm. Well, based on what? I mean, uh, do you know me? No, Father. Or do you like me? Uh, oh, yes, Father, a lot. <laughs> He likes me a lot, and he doesn't know me at all. <laughs> and he'd like to stay. Well, for lunch, anyway. <laughs> Have you heard about Mrs. Spring's cooking? No, Father. <sighs> Three cats we had, and every one of them left home on account of her cooking. <laughs> now then, Father Neil. How long were you in the seminary learning to be a priest? Uh, six years. Mm -hmm. Six years. Oh, well. Since you're a holy innocent and I'm as old and whiskered as a bog mist, <laughs> if I'm to pass you out as me curate, I'll fail you, mind. A few tricks of the trade. First trick, Father Neil. Always keep more up your sleeve than your elbow. Do you follow me? What sort of things, Father? Oh, I'm afraid I can't tell you that. No, no. If I told you that, I'd have to change what was up my own sleeve, would I not? <laughs> now, what's this? Um, Siamese twins, Father? <laughs> Notice your right hand, obeying our blessed Lord, and not knowing what your left hand is doing. <laughs> now, what else must a holy priest be like? Um, charitable. Oh, at all times. Uh, patient. As Job himself. And, and full of considerateness. And love for everyone. Do you take milk and sugar, Father Neil? Herself would interrupt Jesus in the middle of a miracle. <laughs> oh, dear. Women, they're almost as difficult to comprehend as nuns. <laughs> now, we Catholic priests do not marry, Father Neil. Why is that? Because there aren't enough crazy women around. Well, in case you do pass the test, 
and Bibby cure it. I'd better show you the rest of this cuckoo's nest and you can settle in. Come on now. Come in, please. Oh, I've just come to water the fuchsias. And to see if you're all right, Father Neil. Please, that's very nice of you. Slippery as an eel's tail, that one. Father Duddles, well. He's really a very nice man until you get to know him. <laughs> oh, I see. His main weakness is the strength of his convictions. The day of judgment, flee the wrath to come. Come in. Father Neil, I... Woman, I thought I told you to go west to your kitchen. Now I'll be obeyed here. I will not have you wearing the cassock in this house. What time is lunch, Father? Hush, boy. One o'clock, Mrs. Spring. <laughs> Father Neil, I hope you're not to be one of these curates who's forever thinking of his belly. Oh. <laughs> I'm not hungry, Father. Then why, in the name of Beelzebub, do you keep on asking what time to lunch is? I'll send you back to the bishop and get the tuppence back on me bottle. <laughs> oh, Father Neil. Now I'll not have the two of you ganging up on me. Go on, Mrs. Spring, before I take my tongue to you. Lunch forward a bit, if you like, Father Neil. Oh, I, I don't mind if it's at two, Mrs. Spring. Oh. He's not been above an hour at St. Jude's, and he's already altering the times of the meals. <laughs> I repent of my loutish behaviour. And I'm sorry, too, Father Neil. I don't know what came over him. <laughs> That's the problem of living in each other's shoulders all these years, as you'll discover, providing you pass your test. I only came to tell you that uh, I intend to carry on your baptism by giving you a whistle-stop tour of the parish before lunch. Thank you, Father. Right. Well, do you not want to know what time lunch is? Um, not particularly, Father. What a strange lad you are. You keep asking questions and you don't show any decent interest in the answers to them. <laughs> Extraordinary thing, Father Neil. But there's only one father to all these little ones. Me, God? No, I mean me. <laughs> That's why we Catholic priests never marry, you know. So that, so that we can be a father to a whole tribe of them. <laughs> now, look at that little boy, or girl, whichever. It's just very hard to tell when he or she is upside down and back to front. Now, Father Neil, an essential part of your test. Can you tell me what the difference is? Between a boy and a girl? Oh, uh, I'm not sure, Father. How old are you, Father Neil? Oh, never mind, never mind. I'll tell you. Little boys. Have blue eyes. <laughs> and little girls have pink eyes. Did your mother never tell you that? <laughs> Did you hear the tale of the two families on holiday together? Well, the first morning down on the beach is a little Catholic lad of about four summers. And he's playing on the sands with a little non Catholic girl, and they're both skin wrapped like the day they was born. Do you know what the little Catholic lad said to his mummy? Yes, Father. You do? Yes. What? <coughs> mummy, I, I didn't know there was all that difference between a Catholic and a Protestant. <laughs> what difference are you referring to? Um, well, the difference, Father. Which is? Well, the difference everyone knows about. Oh. Everybody except me, it seems. I'll just uh, ask this young nurse if she knows what difference I'm Father, please, don't. Now, there's one other thing puzzling me, Father Neil. How would the sight of this little girl in the state of nature make the little lad realise that she was a Protestant? Wouldn't, Father. Well, that's the joke. Would you mind explaining this joke to me? <laughs> I can't, Father. Well, let that be a lesson to you. What lesson? 
that any curate of mine who pinches me punchlines must expect to suffer. <laughs> Here's our last resting place. Before going off to lunch, I mean. Yes, it's uh, very peaceful here. Well, you could hardly expect a riot. <laughs> the body stretched out and decomposing six feet below. Is this the um, cemetery for the whole town? Indeed. But this section is for deceased Catholics. We do not believe in mixed funerals, you follow. <laughs> On the last day, St. Michael will blow loud the trumpet blast, and winds wild as angels on horseback will blow from the four corners of heaven. And God will start his resurrection like here on this sacred plot of Catholic earth. Stand up, Seamus Flynn, he say. Stand up, Mary Ryan. Stand up, Mickey O'Brien, if you're yet sober. I don't connect with the hip bones. What would he say to Paddy Riley, who had no legs to stand on due to motor accidents? Sit down, Paddy. Oh, pardon me. Have you no faith at all? On Resurrection Day, God will put on Mrs. Pring's thimble, and the legless Paddy Riley will have new ones sewn on. A marvelous sight. One thing, though. Yes, Father? I hope to God I'm not here to see it. <laughs> Your predecessor, Father? I well remember the day 12 years ago when we buried Freddie Connors. Oh, it was a gorgeous day for a funeral. A cold, gusty end of the year, end of a life sort of a day. The trees were bare, and the short grass faded almost white. And not one bird sang. Did you bury him, Father? Father McNally, tall, lean, a beanpole of a man swathed in black, McNally. The booming bittern's voice, and a huge red beak on him, like an eagle with flu. <laughs> All the old cliches. Nonetheless, true for that mind. The pallbearers lowered the coffin slowly down. The frozen earth fell like thunder on the polished wood. I stood there on the edge of this gaping hole, looking down, dizzy like, paying my last respects to a dear old body, loud wailing all round me. Somehow, through my tears, I managed to whisper, Thank God you're dead, Freddy boy, because you'd never have lived through your funeral. Now, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father Neil, you'll be ready for a bite to eat. Thank you, Father. And then your baptism of fire begins in earnest. This evening, your very first confession. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Smells good, Father? It'll be foul. <laughs> but there's one consolation, there'll be plenty of it. Despite the rationing, herself seems to be able to provide us with three square meals a meal. <laughs> <laughs> now then, as part of your test, Father Neil, you'll be taking confession from 4 to 5.30 this afternoon. Fine, Father. Mm -hmm. If he's not been in the box before, he's probably frightened out of his wits, his poor Father Neil. And rightly so. He's probably expecting you to come along and unload your heinous sins. <laughs> but by taking confession at a regular time, you see, you build up a sort of clientele, so to speak. 
The good people get to know where and when to find you. Yes, and how to avoid the priests they can't abide. <laughs> that woman's more at me throat than is me colour itself. Mustard? Oh, thank you. Everything all right? Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Good day to you, Mrs Spring. And the back of my hand here. <laughs> I'm just about to discuss confessional secrets. Well, if there's anything you want, just scream. <laughs> now, Father Neil, I want to have a word with you about the Holy Sacrament. But uh, will you first recite to me the formula for absolution? <clears throat> um, yes. Uh, Miseriatur, uh, ego te absolvo. Um, ego... Oh, I, I think I'd better read it when the time comes, Father. Yes, perhaps it'll be as well. <laughs> now, I'm very sorry to have to tell you at the start, but because you're our newest attraction, you're likely to get the more hardened sinners. Not you, Mrs. Pring. <laughs> <laughs> the whole parish will be flocking here, you know. They'll want to know whether you're kind and merciful in the confession, like myself. <laughs> All right, now, any more questions apart from the time of supper? Uh, tea time, Father? Oh. <laughs> Is it interesting? Are you referring to the timetable of meals in this house or to the Holy Sacrament? <laughs> no. It is blessed tedious. Sitting there by the hour, listening to innocent women and children spitting sins into your unprotected ear. <laughs> <laughs> We had a nice juicy murder now, that'd be a different matter. <laughs> Maybe your first penitent. Oh, that's not likely, Father, is it? <laughs> well, I'd say the odds against for about two to one. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to a murderer? Um, don't do it again. <laughs> Anything else? Please? Oh. <laughs> Come in, please. Oh, everything all right, Father Neil? Oh, I don't think I'm going to make the grade as Father Duddleswell's curate. He's just pig-headed, that's all. When he talks to God, he expects God to take his cap off. <laughs> <laughs> You've not forgotten you're due for confessions in a minute or two. I've forgotten my name a couple of times, but not Are that. Are you ready, Father Neil? I... Oh, is that giddy woman walking up your sleeve again? <laughs> the last phase of your baptism of fire, Father Neil. How are you feeling? Scorched, Father. <laughs> well, I hope your dear knees are not knocking their heads together. Come along now. It is time for me to guide you through the milling crowds to your first confessional. <laughs> Good heavens, Father Neil. The church is as quiet as the top of Mount Sinai. They're not an individual. I expected thousands. I should have put an ad in the paper. <laughs> yeah, Father Neil. Yes, Father? If I uh, receive any complaints from your penitents, I shall have to report it to the bishop, naturally. I realize that, Father. Well, the very best of luck to you. <laughs> Come on now. And I'll be remembering you all the while in my prayers. <laughs> Anybody there? Mice? Not mice! Please, God, don't let that lady complain. <laughs> Bless you. 
Bless me, Father, for I am a sin. Dominus sit in corde tuo, et labius tuis, et vere, et humilita confiteris peccata tua. In nomine Patris, et Fili, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Father? Yes, dear? This is my second confession. Your second confession? Can't you hear very well, Father? <laughs> yes. When was your first? Just before my first communion. When was that? Two weeks ago. Everybody knows that. Ah, well, I'm new to the parish, you see. Oh. You're going to be here long? I don't know. Are you still there, Father? Yes. Uh, what are your sins? I called the grocer a pig. Oh, yes. Two times, Father. Why? Why was he a pig? Why did you call him a pig? Because he was a pig. <laughs> what made you suspect he was a pig? He wouldn't give me a chocolate marshmallow. Oh, I see. Anything else? I committed adultery three times. <laughs> Can you be more precise? Eh? Well, what exactly did you do? I stole three pennies out of my mum's purse. Oh, no, that's the next sin, isn't it? The funny one. Anything else? I committed an immortal sin. A mortal sin? How? I didn't go to Mass last Sunday. Ah, were you ill or something? Marge wouldn't come with me. Uh, is Marge your sister? No, she's my mum. Everybody knows that. Oh, well, what about your father? Doesn't he go to church? My dad? Yes, your dad. He came to my first communion. Uh, not otherwise. He says the next time he comes, it'll be in a bleeding box, Father. <laughs> Is he a Catholic? No, Father. Well, is he a believer, then? No, he's a bus driver. <laughs> well, uh, now, for your penance, um, I, I, I want you to go to Our Lady's altar and say, one Our Father and one Hail Mary for your mother and father, uh, and uh, make a good act of contrition while I give you absolution. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God, because, because thou, thou art so, so good. good. I am very sorry that I have sinned against thee. And with the help of thy grace, I will not sin again. Day in day, ego te absolvo apocatis tuis, in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. Go in peace, dear, and pray for me. <clears throat> Dominus sit in corde tua, et labius tuis, et ver, et humilite confitiaris apocata tua, in nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. How long is it since your last confession? How long... Goodbye, Father. Oh, goodbye, dear. Um, uh, what are your sins? Oh, why don't you mind your own business? <laughs> <laughs> Father Neil. There was a lady run out of the church just now in a terrible panic. I, I didn't say a word to her, Father. Oh, I'm delighted. She's an absolute pest. <laughs> And I saw a little boy come out of the box, radiant, as if you'd given him an ice cream or something. I didn't, Father. Well, anyway, you've passed your test with flying colours. Oh, thank you, Father, very much. And Father Neil. Yes, Father? May your stay at St Jude's continue as happily as it's begun. <laughs> ¶¶